Hey guys, Jonathan here from Smart Home Sounds, an audiovisual retailer based in the UK. And today we thought we'd film another video for you on the Sonos Beam Gen 2, as a lot of people are talking about it and asking questions that we haven't actually covered in our previous video. So we just thought it might be useful for you to uh, cover some more FAQs that we've rounded up from your comments, from speaking to customers, and in the Sonos forums, etc. Remember, we are doing an in-depth review of the Beam Gen 2 as soon as Sonos lets us demo one, which will include a full Atmos demo using our binaural microphone, which you may find useful if you haven't quite made your mind up yet. And lastly, pre-orders or even orders for the Beam Gen 2 are either live or coming very soon. So make sure you check out the website for the latest pricing and availability. So without further ado, let's get stuck into that first question. Probably the most common question that we're getting asked about the Beam Gen 2 is if your TV has just a standard HDMI arc input, can you still use the Beam Gen 2 and get Dolby Atmos through the Beam? Well, it's exactly the same situation as the Sonos Arc. So first of all, let's be clear, the Beam Gen 2 is able to be connected via HDMI Arc, HDMI eARC, or via optical to your TV. Dolby Atmos is only possible to be passed through either a standard HDMI ARC or HDMI eARC connection. It is not possible to get Atmos if you're connecting to your TV's optical port. In most cases, if your TV has an HDMI eARC connection, you're good to go with getting Atmos whenever you're watching Atmos content. If your TV has a standard HDMI ARC, you need to check the spec of your TV to see if it's possible um, that your TV can pass through Atmos via the Dolby Digital Plus codec. Some TVs can, some can't, and it all depends on the age of your TV. I'd say any TVs older than 2016, it's pretty much a given that they won't be able to support Atmos. You may wanna ask your manufacturer or check the specifications to see if there's any mention of Atmos because manufacturers do like to shout about it if they can do it. Do keep in mind that if you are interested in upgrading your TV and you're looking to use something like a Sonos Beam Gen 2 soundbar with it, make sure you look for an HDMI eARC connection on your TV so that you can get the most out of your content and the soundbar. So question two is how good will Atmos be if the Beam Gen 2 does not utilize any height channels like the Sonos Arc does? And that's a great question. Sonos have put a huge amount of effort into improving the sound processing. They've actually pretty much started again from the ground up utilizing that new processor. And the processor has more of an effect than you might think on the soundstage. Now they call it psychoacoustic technology, which basically means the beam can actually trick your mind into where the sound is coming from, even though it's still using the same physical drivers inside as the Beam Gen 1. They've actually worked with Oscar-winning directors on this to make the most out of that new processor. Now I do understand stuff like psychoacoustic technology is marketing spiel, so we'll be testing this out to see how the soundstage compares with the Beam Gen 1 in our upcoming in-depth review and giving you our honest thoughts on it. Also, I will just add to that quickly, the new processor also means that vocals and dialogue has been improved, which is quite important as a lot of people buy a soundbar purely for the fact they can get clearer vocals. Now, the Beam Gen 1 already had a speech enhancement mode, which is continuing to the Beam Gen 2, so hopefully now we'll be able to enjoy even clearer vocals, which I would say is arguably the most important element of a soundbar. Of course, this will be tested extensively when we film our in-depth review in our upcoming video. The next question is about adding a sub and surrounds to the beam and how the setup changes. So this is quite interesting, and forgive me if I explain this really badly, but basically if you use the beam on its own, obviously all the processing will be by the beam. But when you add a Sonos sub and surrounds, processing power is freed up on the beam, so it actually offers a better sound. This all goes back to that psychoacoustic processing. And again, we will see how this works in our upcoming review. Do remember that you can only add a sub and ones and one SLs as surrounds that are on the S2 app and not S1. Question four is can the Beam Gen 2 be used with Dolby Atmos Music on Apple Music? Now we have actually done a video all about Dolby Atmos Music and lossless and high res lossless and everything like that on the Sonos Arc, which will also apply that same principle to the Beam Gen 2. In a nutshell, if you're looking to get uncompressed Dolby Atmos sound from your Sonos Beam Gen 2 using Apple Music's new spatial audio feature, you'll need a TV that has an HDMI eARC port, an Apple TV 4K, and an Apple Music subscription. 
To get compressed Atmos, you just need an Apple Music subscription, but you may want to wait until Amazon Ultra HD gets released, which is pretty much the same idea as Dolby Atmos Music on Apple Music, as that will be supported natively on the Sonos app at 24-bit 48 kilohertz. The beauty of HDMI eARC though, is that it will actually support 24-bit 192 kilohertz, which at the moment is near impossible to get, but it does mean it's future-proof so that if and when Apple Music and other streaming services begin to make it easier for us to get closer to that sampling rate, the Sonos system is equipped to pass this through. I think I'll have a lot more to say on this topic in the next few years or so, and I'm really excited to see what will be possible in that space. Next up, we need to address the upcoming support for DTS Digital Surround, which means that any owners of Blu-rays and DVDs will now be able to watch that content in more than just two-channel stereo. Uh, which didn't support audio through surrounds. DTS won't be supported at launch, but Sonos have given the time scale of by the end of 2021, and it will be coming to all Sonos TV speakers that are supported on S2. So that includes even any of you who own the Playbar, Playbase, Amp, Arc, and both generations of the Sonos Beam. Next up, I think someone asked us how the Beam Gen 2 would compare with the Playbar or the Playbase. Now, let's not forget the Sonos Play Bar was actually the world's best-selling soundbar. So there's probably quite a lot of you out there who still have the Play Bar and wondering if the Beam Gen 2 is actually worth the upgrade. I can see why it's so tempting because you can get a much larger set of features like Dolby Atmos, AirPlay 2, native voice control, etc., all for £449 now. Now, just that list of features might be enough to sway you from the Play Bar to the Beam Gen 2, but in terms of raw sound quality, if you're listening to Atmos through the Beam versus Dolby Digital on the Play Bar, that will actually be quite a close call. Sonos has improved a lot of things regarding sound quality on the new Beam, but as the Play Bar has more drivers built in and it's a wider product in general, you probably would get a little bit more bass and a wider soundstage from the Play Bar, but we're actually gonna take the time to compare them in our next video, as I think a lot of people will be in this quandary. So I think that covers all the main questions we had from customers for now. On to some quick fire questions about the Beam Gen 2. So wall mounting, can you use your previous Beam wall mount on the Gen 2? Yes, you can, as the connections will be exactly the same as the Beam. Can the Beam Gen 2 be used on the S1 app? Unfortunately, not due to the speed of the processor, it can only be used on the latest version of the app being S2. How is the Beam Gen 2 different from the Gen 1? So most notable things are Dolby Atmos support, improved vocal clarity, improved sound processing, a new HDMI eARC, a new wireless radio, new NFC quick setup procedure, and a new grill. Right, hopefully that covers a lot of your concerns and questions that you had. Of course, if you still have any unanswered questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments and either we'll get back to you or the community will. Remember, we do offer extended six-year warranties and a 30-day listen better promise with every Sonos purchase through our site. So if you were already interested in picking one up and you're from the UK, feel free to check us out. Link to the product will be in the description below. I also wanna thank all of our existing subscribers for supporting the channel. And if you're not yet subscribed, make sure you don't miss us in our Beam Gen 2 in-depth review. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.